the butter shortage. Uh, this is, for a lot of the foreigners I know in Japan, this is causing a lot of problem. Um, and this kills me. I come from an agricultural and very free trading company uh, country. Japan is a very industrialized and very protected economy. And Japan is currently in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the, the TPP negotiations, mainly with the US. It has to be with every member of the TPP, which includes New Zealand. And we have a lot of butter that we'd very happily sell to Japan for very, very cheap prices. But of the, uh, there are like five or six categories of product, almost all agricultural, that, um, it's basically the, the government has made these two promises. One, that they would sign the TPP with America and improve everyone's lives by having greater access to more plentiful, cheaper products so that people can, uh, you know, have a better quality of life. Um, at the same time, they've also promised that they're going to protect their, their farmers who are an important voting constituency for the uh, LDP by making sure that they do not remove the protections that they have on certain categories of agricultural products, which are, of course, rice, but they also include beef, pork, um, dairy products, um, and a couple of other things that I can't remember exactly what. But, you know, Japan has crazy, crazy tariffs. One, they have tariffs that mean that if you want to import butter to Japan, there's like, the price goes up multiples. Um, besides which, they also have other non-tariff based uh, rules. For example, um, they limit the, the cheese imports by by banning any any use of any preservative in cheese, including domestic or foreign. Um, but this means that the cheese from New Zealand that I used to get, even when New Zealand can make cheese, which meets the rules here, the kind of cheese that I had growing up in New Zealand um, doesn't make it here because it contains some preservative. The whole idea is that New Zealand's economy is based upon setting, sending cheese and milk and so and butter to Britain. Um, so it always had to be preserved for a certain thing. And of course, Japan understands that if you ban all preservative, it means that uh, people who are importing, uh, you, the life, when the shelf life of the stuff that which they're selling here is, is relatively short, you know, it's only for a couple of weeks, it makes it really physically hard to import stuff here. Um, stuff which comes here, you know, is only on the shelf for a week. It's going it to cost more to send it. So they're kind of clever with how they protect the Japanese market from um, butter and cheese competition from from cheaper and, and great alternatives that exist all over the you know America Canada Australia uh, South America um, and other food products from Southeast Asia and they protect it with all these kind of clever ways to protect a, an industry where the farming industry where the average age now is above 65 it's above the age of official retirement I think there are in most of Japan now the average age for most farmers is 75 they get huge subsidies from the government so they're very very well looked after it's not an industry for poverty but in spite of how much money you can make being a farmer no young people want to do it anymore but for the sake of protecting those farmers and trying to get the whole country's production of butter from a declining number of farmers because they're dying of old age um, there's, a, there's a butter shortage in Japan butter's on going through crazy prices you, in Tokyo you cannot if you can find butter you can't buy more than one pack at a time um, and it's because the government, partly because they told them deliberately to restrict production in order to uh, justify higher prices, but then they, they, they cut back too much and now there's not enough butter. And this is what the whole TPP thing is supposed to be about. And you know, it's crazy. At the same time as they're negotiating to get into the TPP, they're still trying desperately to protect Japan. They're trying to address the butter shortage while they're also trying to protect Japanese farmers, the few of them that are left that make butter, from having to compete against foreign goods for butter. This is exactly what that is for. I mean, I know I go on about it, and of course, TPP has some dark aspects like copyright um, legislation and all uh, a bunch of other kind of aspects to it. But fundamentally speaking, um, this is what you want to improve the lives of people. This is how you do it. This sucks at the moment. You cannot get butter. And people are talking about there were NHK stories. There was an NHK news story about how it was affecting a cookie maker, you know, where most of what they use is butter. And they were talking about how he had been driven to using imported butter. And they showed this old chef in a chef's hat opening up the box of foreign butter and looking at it. Well, it looks really yellow and kind of soft. I don't like it. Um, you know, reminding everybody that foreign butter is, of course, not as good as Japanese butter, and this is a crisis, and we need to solve it through domestic butter. Uh, NHK doing the, the, the good old political line. But this is it. I'm, I, I can't wait for butter to get cheaper and be more plentiful and let the market decide what it costs and let everybody here go on an easier run on meat and all this sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, the LDP, they can't deliver on it because they've promised, you know, they're, they're the votes, the votes of those farmers, if they're in places like Totori, 
in the upper house, they're worth five times more a vote of someone in Tokyo, like my wife. So why would you listen to the wives in Tokyo that don't have enough butter when every farmer <laughs> is, a, is an easier vote to buy, you know, of doing them a favor? Um, and that's the problem that the LDP has, you know, but uh, they're going to win the next election. It's not going to affect anything. But it's crazy anyway, and it's crazy that a country like Japan, which can buy as much butter as it wants from anywhere it wants in the world, is stuck with a butter shortage for the sake of protecting some, you know, some people who should be enjoying their retirement in an industry that no one in Japan really wants to pick up and take from them. But yeah, it's too wrapped up with politics and bribes and all that sort of stuff, and it really, really annoys me. And everyone's talking about there's going to be a, a Christmas shortage, and the government's saying we're going to up production. Why is the government, what is this, Stalinist Russia? Why is the government talking about increasing the production of butter? Uh, what are they going to mix sawdust in it? Like, <laughs> well, is it going to be like the siege of Leningrad? Why not just be a free market economy like Japan's supposed to and allow countries that make it, that want to sell it, to import it and let us eat it? Jeez. It's crazy. I'm sorry. I'm, r I'm ranting a little bit, but um, thank you, Kang and Kodos. Save Hiko and send me butter. Send me butter. That's right. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm gone totally off butter. I'm eating nothing but peanut butter lately, and it, it's having negative effects. So I'll be in Australia for Christmas, and they have butter in Australia, and they're part of the TPP, and it's all cheap, and it's all good. So I'm going to enjoy it there, and I hope when I get back, Japan has come to its senses and signed up to that thing, and we don't have to deal with this insanity anymore. Okay, I'm done raving about butter, but butter is important, and I can't believe we're going through a shortage. I mean, it's literally, at the moment, they're rationing butter. In Japan, in 2015, there's butter rationing. I mean, it's, it, this is like Soviet Russia queuing for bread. I mean, it, it's such a... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to stop now, but... Crazy that Japan has a butter shortage. For no good reason whatsoever. It's ins oh, Anyway, okay, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Just another picture of a cow. This is why I put the, the picture of a cow. I'm totally having a cow over this. That's a, that's, a, that's a very old phrase. I should stop saying that. But exhausted cows cause butter shortage ahead of Christmas. You can read the horror story here of how stupid it is that this is even occurring. Uh, the Guardian talking about it here. Justin McCurry. Uh, go and listen to what Justin McCurry or go and read what he has to say about it. It's, uh, anyway. New Zealand has lots of wonderful butter. We're in the TPP. Just sign up. We'll give it to you. We'll give it to Japan cheap, and everyone's happy. Everyone wins. So on Monday there was like a huge um, earthquake. A Shindo four. It was a Shindo five um, something north of Tokyo. Uh, and yes, it caused butter shortages. You're right. I'm getting to the butter. Don't worry. We're getting to the butter. I'm going to get there. I'm, 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 uh, we're getting there. Okay. So uh, two, but two. Shindo four quakes this week. That is uh, that is pretty pretty freaking me out. Yes, the, here comes the butter. Get ready for it. Buckle up. Buckle. Okay, the butter. Where do we begin with the butter? Oh my god. Okay, so here's the problem. I'm a I'm a simple man. I come from a simple country. I have simple needs, right? And you know, when it comes to agriculture and free trade in Japan, I come from a, a very free trade, very agricultural dependent country, and we sell a lot of stuff to Japan, and we're very happy to have Japan as a customer from New Zealand, and that's why I learned Japanese, because the government was promoting all New Zealanders because we're selling Japan so many apples and kiwi fruits and stuff that uh, if lots of New Zealand school students learn Japanese, maybe we can sell them more apples, more kiwi fruit, and maybe even some more butter, who knows? But, you know, we take what we can. Uh, the Japanese government's been very good to New Zealand, letting us in the door. And so here's the thing, you know, of course New Zealand produces more than it needs with this stuff. You know, we, we, we New Zealand was founded as, a, as like a farm to just supply food to Britain and to Europe. And we got shut out of that, you know, by, by the EU and that, that's fine. So we had to find new markets, so we supply other countries. But the point is, is that, you know, if you go to Australia, you go to America, you go to Singapore, you go to, you know, you go to a lot of countries with, with a reasonable degree of free trade. The concept of having shortages um, that, that are not global shortages, just based on domestic shortages, being unable to buy certain types of food products is kind of crazy, right? Um, and Japan is, you know, it's a symbol of, of free market capitalism, of course. But here's the thing, as we all know, you know, agriculture is kind of special. The reason agriculture is special in Japan is because um, the, um, if you, if you ever want, the most persuasive way I've ever had it put to me, I, I put to Japanese myself, you know, free trade on rice, you pay 20 times the, the market price of rice in Japan, 
it's crazy that you know Japanese are suffering under under these subsidies. Why not? Why not just let the let, let Japan have free trade and import rice from wherever they want to import it from? And they told me look, the, the last time Japan was dependent on imports for food, and uh, and and those imports weren't working as there were Im trade embargoes on Japan was just before World War Two. And you know when they went to go and fix their food problem by going into Asia, and it didn't work out very well. So this is why Asia understands Japan. Japan has an, you know, it's important to Japan to keep self-sufficient with food. It's a security issue for Japan, and with rice, I get it. You know, fine. You got to make if you want to make sure Japan always has enough rice produced domestically or whatever. I kind of understand from a, from a, a regional security perspective, from keeping China and Korea kind of happy and you know and all that sort of stuff. Let Japan grow its own rice. Fine. But here's the thing with these free trade negotiations. I've talked about this before. J you know, Japanese farmers, which basically own, they're one of the ma major lobby groups that influence the current government, the LDP. They've demanded that uh, no matter what free trade concessions are made, you know, to benefit Japanese manufacturers being able to sell without due tra trade duties anywhere else, um, they want to make sure they basically got the government to make a, an election promise that they would not compromise at all on five food pro f food products. Uh, one of those food products that they promised that they would fight to the death and, and sabotage an entire free trade deal for the sake of protecting was the dairy industry in Japan, which is mainly up in Hokkaido. They produce butter, yogurt, cheese, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I understand it with rice, but for some reason the dairy industry also got this whole thing that we will never let our dairy industry uh, lose their monopoly over being able to supply Japanese consumers like you know like myself and anyone who lives in you know in Japan who eats butter or yogurt and that's cool fine okay they want to supply themselves it's a little bit Marxist it's a little bit North Korean style but um, you know this is basically collective farming and you know the, the whatever so they decide to do that so here's the thing you know the problem is is that the average age of farmers in Japan at the moment are 75 years old I mean they're actually coming up within five years to the average life expectancy they're already starting to die out and they're not being replaced by young people. Um, young people don't want to take over being farmers, and they're trying desperately to get you know farm workers from other Asian countries into Japan at the moment. But basically, the the farm industry in Japan is literally dying of old age, and as that industry dies out, you know, the the elderly farmers, you know, in their 80s and their 70s, if they're not dying, they're, they're not producing as much as they used to produce. And they're being kept in a very, very high standard of living, by the way, by, by all the subsidies that they get. They're getting paid money even if they don't produce anything. And, and that's literally what's been happening. They're not producing enough food, and yet they're still getting paid and protected from uh, having to compete with uh, imported stuff. And I can tolerate that. To the point that so long as there's butter that I can buy in the shops and it costs a little bit more, fine, this is Japan, food is more expensive, I can live with that. But the thing is, for the last two years now, while demanding special status and protection from uh, us being able to buy cheese from Europe or from New Zealand or Australia, or being able to buy butter um, from, whenever we, from wherever we want at market prices, for the sake of protecting these 75 year old farmers you know up in Hokkaido who are dying or if they're alive they're not doing anything because they sure as hell aren't making enough butter um, and for the sake of keeping them in their Mercedes Benzes and doing nothing and failing at their basic job of, of making enough butter in a market that they have a complete monopoly over I mean they've got us over the like it's like the, the guy with the clothes horse you know with the, with the jumping horse um, the gym horse you know from the uh, scene in um, Pulp Fiction, you know, in the basement. That's basically what the whole of the 99.9% the .9 of people who live in Japan who do not actually make butter are currently in that position from the market thing. And those old people are there. You know, we're in the gym suit and we're tied down and we've got no other way to, to comply. They can have their way with us and they're not even doing it. They're just lying back and, and not even making butter. And so we're getting, so we're getting screwed on price. And on top of that, they're not even making enough. And so, you know, the Japanese government came up with this brilliant plan well, last year. They, they flew in an emergency amount of uh, imported butter. And they've announced that they're going to do the same again this year. They're going to import 100,000 tons of butter. And again, so, you know, if you, if you have a problem with a butter shortage in a free market country, you know, in a normal country with a normal economy that's a normal member of the international community, well, what happens? Consumers would go, the price of butter would go up, all the butter suppliers in the world would rush to supply to Japan to supply those supermarkets to give Japanese, you know, 
so consumers all the butter they need because of course if there's a shortage in Japan there's more demand and prices will go up and everyone wants to go and supply and Japanese are already used to paying high prices for butter so it's a great opportunity the problem is is that the Jap you know Japanese government doesn't want Japanese consumers buying foreign butter they want to protect those old farmers that are doing nothing so in order to protect them rather than allow us to go and just buy the excellent butter that New Zealand farmers and Australian farmers and American farmers and European farmers and everyone is standing by waiting to provide Japan with all the butter that they'll ever need. Um, instead, the Japanese government is going to go and use tax money. So on top of actually paying for overpriced butter subsidies to begin with, they're taking my taxes and they're going to go and buy 100,000 tons of butter from somewhere. Um, basically, to you know like a, it's like a commissary it's like in, in the soviet union where the government would go and actually artificially inflate the supply and supply the government will be supplying butter which we have to pay at over uh, at exorbitant prices to subsidize these farmers who do nothing and that is frustrating and annoying to me it doesn't make any logical sense if they were if they if they were doing a half competent job i could tolerate you know not not being able to buy the cheese that i want to buy from overseas um, the thing with the cheese, by the way, people ask me about this. Um, you, the reason you can't buy most cheese that you want to buy from overseas is that um, Japanese, again, it's not only duties and uh, restrictions on imports that the J Japanese government impose. They also impose a lot of um, soft uh, restrictions. For example, they impose a restriction on uh, cheese are not allowed to contain any preservatives in Japan. Um, the reason that they have this is that um, the only way that New Zealand cheese could be made and that it could be sent to Britain and sold in Britain was if it contained preservatives. Um, you know, if, it, if the cheese doesn't contain preservatives, it can go bad fast, like within a few days. So, you know, you have to, you can't even put it on a ship. You have to put it on an airplane to get it to the market in time. So immediately taking out preservative, you, you eliminate like 90% of the world's cheese immediately. Um, and it means that the stuff that's there, you know, is going to go off probably by the time it arrives at the Japanese airport. So it basically means that it makes it physically impossible to import cheese to Japan. I mean, the stuff which gets here is very expensive. It is flown in by airplane. And often it's it's reformulated from the normal cheese that you get in Australia or America or Europe because they have to take certain things out, uh, which are things which extend the shelf life of those products. So, um, you know, there's lots of ways that they basically, um, they call that for consumer safety, but it's not. That's just a sneaky way of uh, making it physically impossible for cheese, you know, to make it look like you're not blocking cheese, but making it practically impossible to, to import. Um, but yeah, for me, just the fact that the government, you know what's going to happen from this is that we are going to pay extra because we're paying through tax money for the government to go and buy butter. The government's going to go and buy butter in order to protect the prices and the monopoly of these farmers who are not doing their job two years in a row now. We've had shortages in Japan and it's not going to get better because they're complaining it's because of the heat and there's not enough stock and the cows are tired. and Well, maybe all of that's true well that's not going to get better but also you know the people are just failing at their at their basic job and they have a monopoly and they're failing it's like, it's like if we had a telephone company that's the you know a monopoly company that's the only company that can supplies with telephones and they have a shortage of people and they don't do their jobs and so no one has telephones right it's the same with butter so it, it is it is crazy um at the moment and this is literally north korea in terms of um, the way that the, 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 the dairy economy is in Japan at the moment in terms of both operation strategy and in terms of the actual supply situation. This is North Korea for dairy products. And yet the Japanese government is in America fighting in TPP negotiations to prevent the um, Japanese market for dairy products being opened up to competition and to free trade. Uh, which is completely absurd. I, I get it for rice. I get it for, you know, other products. But you know, when the domestic industry has so abjectly failed as the Japanese domestic dairy industry has, um, you know, I, I, I think they deserve to get thrown under the bus for this, for, for, for these shortages. And they shouldn't have been protected in the first place. I think they've lost any entitlement that they've had by, by failing. I mean, if you can't, when you're getting paid exorbitant prices and getting government subsidies and you've got a monopoly and you still can't meet supply i mean surely you're you, it's time for a timeout at that point so it's insane right i mean <laughs> i mean i'm in the biggest capitalist you know economy in asia or like, i guess china is which is kind of ironic now but uh, it's north korea for butter so anyway uh mandy thanks for the offer we, we still uh, it's okay i've got a stock i'm surviving i'm surviving it's just the ideology of the thing it's the ideology of the butter that's killing me and it's crazy uh, uh, 
Oh, okay, yes, I just talked about that. That's yes, yes, that's right. Um, it is a good one for the um, <laughs> for the for the headline pun industry, I guess. But um, oh, yes, I mean seriously, between earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and and Blatter being re-elected the head of FIFA and butter being out of supply I, the whole world seems to be ending at the moment I'm pretty sure these are these are these are the signs of the apocalypse uh, you heard it here first I don't know I mean I think I think I think that I think that's what it is